Okay. Let's begin once again the fourth parak of Pirkei Avois. Ben Zayma Oimer says, Ben Zayma Izehu Chacham, who is the wise man? Halaymi Mikol Adam, he who learns from everyone. Shenemar, as the Pasik says, Mikol Milamdai Hiskalti Kid Vasecha Sicholi. So who is wise? Wise defines the Mishnah not necessarily as the smartest person, but as he that does what? Learns from each and every person. Says If you do not love it, what happens if you love the wisdom? And you lost for it, literally. You may not know anything. You are wise. Why are you wise? From the mere love of the wisdom. Because what you love, you will reach and acquire the wisdom. Says Rabbi Niyoyna, that's reason number one. I'll tell you a short story. My Rabbi Rabbi Shabran Brown from Yeshiva Farakwe, I'm sure many of you know, if you ever watch him at a bar mitzvah, so what happens at a bar mitzvah? The bar mitzvah boy gets up and speaks. And what do most people do? <coughs> when the bar mitzvah goy gets up and speaks, either they pull out their phone or they leave if they have no respect or they occupy themselves with something else. Why? Because e- either, we call this b'manashach, either what he's going to say is going to be, you know, nothing, so why am I wasting my time listening? Or he's going to repeat the generic, you know, shtikol taira about tefillin, about whatever the parsha is. <coughs> And therefore, why waste your time listening? And you think, certainly a Rav, a Gadol, you know, why would he be listening? It's not a waste of time. Yet, if you go to any Bar Mitzvah, you'll see Ramesh Brown sitting there, staring intently, intently and listening to the Bar Mitzvah boy speak. And I think, I think one time someone asked him, or he explained, that there's no such thing as you heard it, you know it. Every time you hear something, every time you hear someone else explain it, there's always one nuance, always one difference. And that's called someone who loves something. If you'd have a technology engineer and there'd be someone explaining something within the world of technology, he would listen intently. Why are you listening? You know what he's about to say. No, because maybe he'll explain it in a different way. Maybe he'll bring out a different example. Maybe he'll bring it down to earth in a different way. But that comes from where? That comes from one who is ayhev. He loves wisdom and therefore he's a laymaid mikol adam. He learns from every person. And continues, Rabbi Yoyna, there's a second benefit from loving wisdom. Someone who loves wisdom. One who loves wisdom is going to what? It only comes from the fear of Hashem. And wants the true wisdom. As we all know, what is the beginning of wisdom? Yeras Hashem. What comes out in there? If you love wisdom, you're going to fear the word of God. If you seek out the Taira, if you search for it like silver and jewels, oz, then, then you'll understand the word of God. You'll fear Hashem, excuse me, and you'll find the knowledge of Hashem. What is Shlema Melech? The wisest of all men teaching us. If you seek after the wisdom, and you urge, you lust, you desire it. If you were to want Taira, if you were to want Chachma, like you want money, then you'll understand the fear of Hashem. Timsa continues the Mishnah. While Zalmer ben Zayma, regarding this, ben Zayma said, "Ezel chacham alay min mikol adam." So now that we know that what creates, what brings you to chachma, what brings you to chachma, what brings you to chachma is the desire, the love for it. Then that explains ben Zayma. How do you get there? Like we explained, you learn from each and every person. You love it so much. And you lost for it. You ask every single person. Even someone who only knows one thing. 
You learn from him. Then you become wise. You don't say, oh, what does this guy know? What does this person know? It's a waste of time. There's no such thing. You learn from each and every person to become wise. If you lost something, you lost a key, what would you do? Every person you find, you'd ask them if he knows where your item is. And we continue the Mishnah with a famous line. Eizahu Gibar. Who is strong? Who knows? Eizahu Gibar. Ha-koyvesh es Yitzroi. Someone who conquers his desires. Says Rabbi Yoyne, K'moshe Koye Chai Kof Amalaz Lai Kof Achashivu Soi. Just like strength of the body makes one great, Kach. So to your neshama is measured by conquering your yitzara. And the physical strength of the body is hitting with animals. Animals could carry something. Some more than their friends. That's not what Ben Zayma is talking about. Physical strength, lifting weights. Kiloin de is Gevura. It doesn't call it Gevura strength. Ach, Gevura salev, the strength of heart. Sheesh Vashne Koyaches. There's two types of strength. Number one, Leos Koyach, Legibar Bil Mochama, physical strength. Velo Yiv Chalib, Velo Yiv, you're never afraid. Gam Koyach, Kevisha Zayetzer. And the second type is the strength to conquer your Yetzer Rav. He Nechlek has been Adam Amehim, and that's the difference. You want to know what's the difference between you and an animal? What's the difference between man and beast? Animals have no desire, have no strength of the heart. This is such a big deal to be strong. Anyone can lift weights. You can train yourself for that. That wants to destroy you. That is Givura Shenemar. As the Apostle says, So he's teaching us Rabbi Yaina an incredible lesson. What is a Gibar? A Gibar is not one who is stronger than anyone else, but rather Givura Salim. Now, I just want to explain this for one moment. What is the difference between you and an animal? Rabbi Yonah just taught us. The difference is gvuras halev. What that means is an animal has strength. But does an animal have knowledge? Of course not. When an animal sees something, instinct attacks. An animal will never see its prey and not attack it. Why not? The answer is because it doesn't have gvuras halev. It doesn't have strength of heart. It doesn't overcome its desires. The moment an animal has a desire, it acts upon it. So realize. When you act in a way, I shouldn't say you, when one acts in a way that when they have a desire, they pounce on it, that is an animalistic way of living life. A human being does not live life that way. A human being does what? A human being has desires. We have incredible desires and we have incredible urges. But what do we do at that moment? We utilize our leave, our heart, to take a moment to overcome those desires. And we conclude with the words of Rabbeinu Yoyna, Erech ha'apayim, what does it mean? Erech ha'apayim, slow to anger, nikra ha'amar rech ha'apav, in return of the inaka miyad. That he doesn't take revenge right away. Ach mamtin shah, he waits a moment. O makam linkam nikmasai. Ki ha'kaisan, because one who is angry, o mitnakeim miyad, and he takes revenge right away. Mechabel es maisav. He destroys his actions. As we just explained, he's like an animal. He's not utilizing his mind. The moment he has an urge, the moment he has a desire, he pounces on it. So Shalom HaMelech is teaching us what is the secret? What is the secret to overcome your desires? What is the secret to not do something you're not supposed to do? What is the secret to not look, to not click, to not go somewhere you're not supposed to do? You know what the secret is? Erech Apayim, slow to anger. What does it mean you're slow to anger? Someone angers you. Someone upsets you. You don't right away 
And you might not ever get to that point, but you do it slowly. You wait a little bit. Let's explain. Rabbi Yaina just gave us an incredible Eitzah. And he ends off. To fight against Arayas, to fight against all lusts and desires. So Rabbi Yoyna just gave us an incredible tool. Everyone should listen to the tool of Rabbi Yoyna. And uh, recently I heard someone, I don't remember who it was, who said over this idea, that what's a tool, what's a way to overcome desires? To wait a moment. If you want to do something, and you feel like you can't control yourself, you know what the Eitzah is? Erech To be slow. Wait a little bit. Not right now. And I think, actually, now I remember, I believe it was with Daniel Glassin who was explaining. He said, what you do is you tell the Yitzhahara, I'll do it next time. When you tell the Yitzhahara, I'll do it next time, what happens at that moment? The Yitzhahara stops fighting you. Because the Yitzhahara says, ah, you're going to give in? You don't tell the Yitzhahara no. If you tell the Yitzhahara no, then it fights back stronger. But if you tell the Yitzhahara, next time, tomorrow, Erech you take it slowly. You can't forgive the guy right away. The guy really angered you. You're Erech You're slow to anger. Right now, I'm not going to take revenge. Maybe tomorrow. That waiting period is all that it takes. Once you have that waiting period, once you tell the Yitzhahara, tomorrow, next time, all of a sudden, the urge slowly dissipates. Now the urge dissipated? So what happens the next time, obviously? You tell the Yitzhahara the next time. And slowly you build up that givura, slowly you build up that internal strength, which the Mishnah is teaching us, Ben Zayim is teaching us, Izehu Gibar, the strong man is he who is Kaivish as Yitzroy.